For a film franchise with monsters as protagonists, Twilight has very few scary or disturbing moments. But a year before the first Twilight movie, Kristen Stewart starred in an actual horror movie. And you know what? The Messengers, directed by Danny and Oxide Pang and produced by Evil Dead creator Sam Raimi, is actually a very good movie. The film follows the Solomons, a family of sunflower farmers, as they settle into a rural home in North Dakota. Little do they know, the former owners were brutally murdered many years before, and their spirits still haunt the house. Jess, Kristen Stewart, and her little brother Ben are the only people who can see the sinister ghosts. Jess is tormented and even attacked by these spirits, but her parents, Dylan McDermott and Penelope Ann Miller, are unable to trust her because, sometime earlier, Jess crashed the car while drunk and rendered her brother mute. The Messengers owes a lot to The Shining, as both films feature a spacious haunted house, a main character who made an irresponsible mistake in the past, and who is singled out by the ghosts, and an adult figure who turns on the family. Through the conversation with Delbert Grady and the ballroom photograph from 1921, it is suggested that Jack Torrance is somehow the reincarnation of Grady, the previous hotel caretaker who murdered his family with an axe. But The Messengers is far more explicit about John Burwell being the man who killed the family in the opening of the film. But for all its similarities to Kubrick's classic, The Messengers is a strong, unsettling movie with a mind of its own. The filmmakers use dark lighting and eerie music to maintain an ominous atmosphere in the house, but for once, Stewart defies a common horror cliché by switching on the light before being manhandled by evil spirits. Indeed, some of the tense, effective scares take place in barns and even sunny sunflower crops, which are unusual set pieces for a horror movie. Even in the middle of a bright summer's day, the film generates a building sense of Jess being stalked, and the payoffs, especially when Jess is dragged into the shadows, are genuinely disturbing. The vicious crows are a threatening presence throughout the film, and the jump scares, while predictable, are still startling. John is a kind, caring farmhand, and is the only person who listens to Jess, so it's all the more distressing when he descends into madness and tries to kill the Solomons. The crawling effects for the ghosts are either really bad CGI or really bad stop motion, but thankfully these effects are rarely used. Kristen Stewart once again proves herself to be far too talented to be wasting her time in Twilight. Like Bella Swan, Jess initially appears sullen and reserved, but this is because of her disbelieving parents and the stress of moving house. The scenes of Jess getting to know local kid Bobby, uh, Dustin Milligan, are more believable than Twilight as they work around a common interest, basketball, and don't involve submission in any way. For these reasons, Jess is a much better heroine than Bella. The love interest subplot doesn't amount to much, but you still get a sense that these people like each other. It's nice to see Jess relax and warm to her parents, so when the hauntings start and Jess's disbelieving parents become suspicious of her, the souring of their relationship generates drama. You wouldn't think so from, t from again, Twilight, but Kristen Stewart is actually a very good, emotive actress in The Messengers, and in most of her other roles. Stewart plays troubled teen Jess Solomon with conviction, and her fear, anxiety, and insistence about the ghosts in her house all feel natural and completely real. In The Cake Eaters, another pre-Twilight Kristen Stewart movie, I enjoyed Stewart's performance but didn't like her character, as Georgia, who only wanted sex from Beagle, seemed awfully unsympathetic for a girl with a terminal illness. But in The Messengers, Jess is a well-written, well-acted, and likable protagonist in a solid, chilling horror movie. My only major problem with The Messengers is the film's lapses in tension. The film is short and well-paced, but toward the middle we get a montage of Roy and John planting a thriving crop of sunflowers. This means that the ghosts did nothing for several uneventful months. We know this because if the ghosts did disturb Jess, then the montage would have been interrupted. The brooding crows, which are apparently linked to the restless spirits in the house, attack John toward the end of the film. 
Bloodied and confused, John mistakes the Solomons for his own family and tries to murder them. This is a stressful, claustrophobic climax, and John Corbett is a terrifying madman, but the impact is reduced slightly when you realize that the crows could have attacked John and made him crazy at any point in the film. Aside from these moments of impaired tension and some glaringly bad effects, The Messengers is surprisingly good. Sure, it's the shining light, but it's still well-written, engaging, and pretty damn scary. Kristen Stewart does a great job and deserves more film roles like this. I love The Shining. It's one of my favorite movies, and it's my second favorite Kubrick movie after 2001. The Messengers doesn't come close to The Shining, which it takes after quite closely, but it still earns four stars out of five.